you guys make some adjustments, kind of get back to maybe how you wanted the game to look? Can you just take us through the change and what you told the team after the first quarter? Yeah, I don't know that uh, th there wasn't any adjustment. Um, I think that, uh, you know, it. Um, there's a couple things. I think, one, it's one thing to not play well because the other team plays well. Um, the things I didn't like were things that um, – I didn't like in our preparation. It's one of the few times all year I haven't liked our preparation today. Shoot around was not sharp. Shoot around was not focused. It wasn't horrible, but it wasn't to the standard that we've talked about getting to. And um, so we, you know, uh, I did not like our defensive talk, which I thought was going to be stressed against them because one, they could stretch Lee out to the perimeter. So in communicating where that player was, was going to be critical. Two, we talked about, you know, finding the point guard early. Um, we talked about finding uh, 10 early. And um, I just didn't like. I just didn't like the things that we pride ourselves on doing, talking defensively, offensively playing together. I just didn't think we were doing those things very well. Do you feel like the short turnaround might have had an impact on that slow start in the preparation? No. No, that's just an excuse. We've, we played three straight games in, uh, I mean, we've played three straight games in Florida with no day in between. So, no. I, I think this time of the year, I think when you have, you're coming out of finals, you can use a lot of excuses, but at the end of the day, um, the standard's a standard, and if you're falling below that, the leaders on the team need to uh, pick it up. I can hold them to the standard. You know, that's one of the things I tell them all the time. I can do it. However, we're only going to get so good if I'm the one that's doing it. All right, we have to have the leaders on this team do it, and for the most part, our, our leaders have. Uh, but today, we weren't as sharp. And did you have any thoughts on Yoki's performance? Yeah, I thought Yoki uh, battled, you know. I, I don't think we were as timely getting her the basketball tonight. I thought I credit Oral Roberts in that uh, they had good awareness. Uh, uh, they, uh, anytime we took a cutter through the lane, that cutter stopped with Lee. And um, they did a good job of that. So um, I thought Yoki really battled. Obviously, really impressed with the rebounds because when you're being stretched out to the three-point line, that's really hard for a center to get the amount of defensive rebounds that she got tonight. So really, uh, really fly into the ball well. And did you have any comments on her uh, make, becoming the double-double record holder in program history? Um, they, you know, there have been some great players play here, so that's a heck of an honor to do that. There have been some uh, fantastic players that uh, could put up a lot of double-doubles a lot of different ways. And, um, you know, she fits right in that group of the very best to have ever played here. I thought Gisela had a nice spark today. What did you think about her game? Yeah, I thought she, I thought she did some good things tonight. Um, she was um, rested from her lack of uh, shoot-around uh, <laughs> just, she did. She played well tonight, and I was glad to see it because she did not have a good shoot around. She was not very talkative. I almost wondered if she wasn't sick. Um, and uh, I thought she responded well tonight, and I thought she did play with a good pace and, and thought she did some good things. She continues to um, grow in her understanding of things, and, and that's really big for us because uh, she's a matchup problem for another team. It's not the first time a team has scored 100 on Oral Roberts, but in those games they've also scored 70-something. Yeah. As they like to, you know, they're, they're good at scoring. They are. Yeah. But, I mean, holding that team under 60 points, it was close, but now five straight under 60 points. Is there a lot of pride in that? There is, and I thought our one-on-one -on -one defense was better as the game wore on. I thought it was a little soft early in the game, and I thought they were getting to spots, particularly the last four or five minutes of that first quarter. I thought they were getting deep against us, but I thought we got better as the game went on. I thought our talk got better. That was probably the thing that was um, 
I was the least happy with. It was we were very. Um, we have been a really good team at shoot around of talking our way through either problems and or the scout and or both figuring things out. And we did not do that very well at all today. But I, I thought in the game we got better. And I'll be honest, at halftime I didn't talk at all. Um, I asked them questions because I said, all right, you tell me what you need to do better. You tell me what's working. You tell me uh, how we play better. So I was pleased with that communication at halftime. Um, but to hold them under 60, this team can really score. And they've scored all year long. And um, we did some decent things tonight to do that. I've noticed in, in these type of games, when you op open up the margin, second half of the third quarter, you empty the bench. Yep. Start of the fourth, you bring the starters back in. I was just wondering if there was a particular reason for that strategy. Um, I, I think a couple things. One, um, we've still got players that need to play in kind of the meat of the game and end of the third, that kind of stuff, mixing and matching. But at the same time, our starters don't need to sit the entire time. I could just leave them out there and then, you know. So generally what I've done in these type of games is do exactly that. They, the starters come back in. They get the first three minutes, three and a half minutes of the fourth, and then, you know. And I also think it's really hard for players like maybe who haven't played to just only come in at the end. I think it's good for them to come in earlier and then get another run late. And, um, you know, we're still trying to figure out, you know, I think it's critical that we uh, get better play from that bench. I think it's critical that we get more consistent play from our backup centers. I think it's critical that we get um, more consistent play um, from some of our young guards. So that's a reason. Just to expound upon what you talked about earlier with Yoki, from a big picture perspective, just what has she meant to K-State women's basketball? Uh, boy. Um, I think it's a lot deeper than just basketball. Um, you know, this is a young lady that's been Scholar Athlete of the Year in the Big 12. Um, she has um, represented uh, Kansas State Athletics numerous events throughout, whether it be the Catbacker Tour or whether it be Ahern Fun Dinners, whether it be pep rallies at the start of the year, whether it be Student Athlete Council, all the above. Um, now her platform because she's an outstanding basketball player, gives, gives her a wider platform. And I think she just uses that really, really well. She has as good of a, I think, appreciation of the opportunities that are provided to um, student athletes is, is any player I've ever had. And in this era where there's a lot of entitlement, there's a lot of this is what I'm owed out there. She sets the tone in that locker room. We don't have that in our locker room. We're owed nothing. We're owed nothing. Um, we earn everything we get, you know, we're, we're owed nothing. We're lucky to be at Kansas State. We're lucky to be representing Kansas State. And I don't think there's a better representative, and I think we've got a lot of really good ones in our athletic department, but there's none better than Aoka Lee. Um, now, when you talk about nationally, 61 points, breaks the record, um, comes off of a um, knee injury that is, that is, um, a challenging knee injury 
to recover from and to do it the way she's done it and to come back and play the way she's played. I don't think that whole story is written. Um, well, I know it's not. I know it's not. But, um, yeah, she's meant a lot to us, but not just us. I think the athletic department overall and, and, and the university as well because she does it so well. And, um, you know, I'm lucky to coach her and uh, – uh, I'm lucky to coach this group because we've got a lot of really good ones in here. Uh, but they've got a good leader in her that have kind of showed the way, too. That's pretty lengthy, wasn't it? That was good. <laughs> <laughs> That's a tough question. You're going to ask me one area. But uh, all right, guys, thank you. Appreciate it. I could have gone on. <laughs>